Thank you, Lord. This is part of what they call the old country, right? Earth was all made the same time, but there was people here inhabiting this part of the, of the world long, long, long before uh, North America. Most of the people, is, if you're like me, you're gonna come over here to hunt, but you're gonna fall in love when you come to Spain. My name's Colorado. I've been hunting my whole life, guiding, outfitting, and hunting. Where in the world? 30 years now, I've made my living outdoors. Somewhere in the outback. We're in Mongolia. Hello, Argentina. Right on the El Bicho. Red Square, Moscow, Russia. Howdy, Colorado. Back, welcome to New Zealand. Where in the world? I just love it so much. I'm going to keep on loving it if it don't kill me. If I had it my way, I'd take the whole world on. I'm walking around a village in a castle that was made probably 500 years ago. I'm in Morella Village in the country of Spain. We're here to hunt Ibex with Salva Monforti. He's been around a long time. He's well known. He's very well respected. The areas that he's got to hunt are absolutely stunning. I knew that before we headed over here. This is a place that you go hunting for the game that you're after, the adventure that's completely surrounding you. The history, the culture is something that you can't go on a hunt here unless you bring your family and friends and, and you explore Spain. It's one of the old countries and it's literally magnificent. This is a beautiful place. <laughs> they told me next time I, I go up here, I have to go to and they know what bag I'm looking for. <laughs> One of the things that's most important to me is, is to take my rifle with me when I go. And if it's at all possible, and I mean at all possible, I'm taking my rifle with me and I'm taking my ammunition with me. It's not difficult to bring a gun into Spain as long as uh, we know it in advance. We will prepare an invitation letter for the hunter and then once here, a member of our staff will be waiting for them at the airport and go clear the gun and get the, the temporary import permit. I got my rifle. She goes, you Montana? I said, I'm Colorado. She said, this Montana? I'm like, that's the rifle. <laughs> She's looking at Colorado and Montana. She said, hang on. <laughs> she had to go fix her. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't know what Colorado was shooting with Montana or Montana. Was Welcome to Colorado. <laughs> I got my rifle though. We're good. For those who prefer not to bring their own guns because they want to spend a few more days just traveling around and we know it's difficult when you're in a hotel. We would, uh, we have uh, rifles to uh, offer all kind of calibers, good scopes, so that would be, that wouldn't be a problem. We've been shooting Norma ammunition for about a year now and I can tell you there's a difference. There's a difference in the ammo. And this was another example of, I'm starting to call it the Norma knockdown. You're just, when you, when you hit something with that ammo, it works. They, they call it precision ammo. And the pride that they take in, in making that ammo second to none, like second to none. And it shows, I'm just seeing it more and more and more. So if you want some other kind of ammo, don't look in my bag. It'd be full of Norma. Where in the world is Colorado Buck is brought to you by Norma Ammunition, precision ammunition for the serious hunter. Nikon Optics, trust earned. Armscore USA and Rock Island Pistols. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Worldwide Trophy Adventures, the Mule Deer Foundation. Kenetrek Boots, cheaper than dirt.com. ACI and the Ammo and More Store in Stevensville, Montana. And the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle by the Montana Rifle Company.
This segment brought to you by Norma Ammunition. Precision ammunition for the serious hunter. One of the neater things is, is, is driving through this, these little villages. And when you go through these, they're almost like alleys. Instead, when you run into somebody, somebody's got to back up. That, that's all this too. You ain't, you ain't getting through. Somebody's not getting through unless somebody backs up. We went to one up here. I'll never forget this. There's three people that live in the village. Three. There's one farmer and two brothers that own a bar. That farmer must make a heck of a crop to support that bar and both those bartenders. <laughs> There's nobody else in town. When, when you get to, to certain places, you're going to get to a point, you're going to sit on your own glass countryside, see if you can find uh, some ibex, and you're going to see terrace after terrace after terrace, and there may be 20 of them from the bottom of the canyons all the way, some of them all the way up to the top. It's an agriculture thing. There, it's a fence or a boundary. And then yet another is they used to use them for to fight behind when the wars was going on. This is part of what they call the old country, right? The earth was all made the same time, but there was people here inhabiting this part of the, of the world long, long, long before uh, North America. Because of, because of the age, a lot of these, these villages and these houses, beautiful, beautiful homes, as if they're abandoned. Trying to get out of the wind and glass some spots if we can. It's really blowing hard. He wants to get to the other side. See if we can see back underneath us where we are now. It's just, there's just what we have seen is all bedded up now it's because it's blowing so hard. But we're going to get on the other side. See if we can look back underneath us, see if there's anything there. We were up top hunting this morning and the wind is so severe you can't you can't even glass you can't hardly get any more sit down in glass without moving around so we've traveled to the bottom of one of these canyons we're going to walk the bottom of the canyon glass the canyon walls which are just solid rock rim rocks and um hunt from down here see if we can't have any like it's just too windy up top so you ready i'm ready you? i'm right behind you man A lot of that country, even when there wasn't a road, there's not a road there, you're looking at it, you're glassing it, and you're seeing, you're seeing where you're going, but you're well, we're going to have to repel or something off here. Everywhere that we went, there's little hidden trails, and we walked them. Sometimes we'd end up in the bottom of uh, these canyons, but we'd always end up on a trail, an easy to walk trail. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's like a pathway that if you like to hike, you'd go hike on. That one there is even young. I think that in two or three years. The, the biggest one? Yes. Really? What's your old? How, how, how old do you think he is now? Nine years old. Really? Yeah. And when you're walking in some of those canyons, you can see where hundreds of years ago somebody built something. Right, a little ledge with some stones so they could walk across. Can you imagine when you're walking through there over the last hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, the people that lived there, how they dressed, what they ate, the way they lived. When I say you're gonna fall in love with the food, it's just one of the things that you are gonna fall in love with. They take pride in it. Like how they'll, they'll, the decor of it, the way it looks, not just the way it tastes, but the way it looks. And he's over there putting these big prawns in there and, and, and crawfish and, and shrimp, and, but they're all lined up the same distance apart. And they'll use pasta, they'll make it out of pasta and then they'll make it out of rice, they'll use that for the beds. They take pride in everything they do. Follow all the action on Facebook at Where in the World is Colorado Buck? Oh. 
This segment brought to you by the Montana Rifle Company, makers of the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle. There's castles all over the place, okay? One of those is Morella. It's one of the most stunning things you'll ever see. And it dates back to, actually they started working on Morella in the year 714. If you can believe that, 714. It's so ancient. You can go all through that, you can tour it. And it's literally minutes from the camp. It's surrounded by huge, huge rock stone walls that they, that they this was a battlefield, ancient, ancient battlefields uh, all in this country. terrain is definitely steep it's absolutely beautiful and it's stunning is what it is and when you look at it there's a fear factor that jumps in they're going to have to climb this stuff to go hunt these ibex but the fact is there's a network of roads all through these mountains they're they're dating back hundreds and hundreds like 500 years ago incredible drive to just to get to here but this is the end of the road so we're going to hike from here straight up, literally, and get up on the top of that floor and glass these big basins and bowls. It's beautiful. It's steep. But it's beautiful. We're up at one of these ridge lines. We're not not skyline by anything unless it's just right here below us but getting up in this part of the country is great it's beautiful but we've gotten up here there's a storm coming in and obviously it's getting worse and we can't see from one minute to the next we'll give it a little bit of time see if we can see if it'll lift if it doesn't there's no sense to spend the rest of the day up here for you know you, can, you can't see very far This is just mountain hunting. When you get, you would get off, we take off one, one place and the weather's one way. You get up here, it can change just like that. So, and he spotted a young ibex over here on a rock. Some of the places you see is just like mountain goats back at the house, back at the house, back in North America. A couple times I'm ready to like, we're gonna have to get somewhere. This is gonna be all day. And we're right, we're very close to the Mediterranean Sea. As a matter of fact, when we're hiking some of these mountains, you can glass and see the ocean or the sea. You can see it from where we were. That proximity with these mountains to the to the sea created all this different weather patterns. Actually the sea Mediterranean Sea out there, it doesn't it doesn't seem like you're this high and above all that but you but you are. Let me tell you what else is gonna happen to you when you come to Spain. Most of the people, is, if you're like me, you're gonna come over here to hunt, but you're gonna fall in love when you come to Spain. All right, morning four. We're uh, from talking to Manola, we're gonna walk off of these ridge lines down here in, in glass best we can. It can't make up its mind whether it wants to rain and blow or be nice and sunshine. It's one minute it's one thing, one minute it's the next, so until we can see what's gonna happen. We're going to uh, ease off the size of these ridge lines in glass. Kind of trying to get out of the wind here. moving up and down the ridge here. We're gonna try to get over there to them before they get off the ridge and into the timber. And if we can do that, maybe we'll get a shot. He's found one, he said one's very good. I really don't know. I see they all look good to me. 
NBC Money said very good. Where in the world is Colorado Buck is brought to you by Norma Ammunition, precision ammunition for the serious hunter. Nikon Optics, trust earned. Armscore USA and Rock Island Pistols. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Worldwide Trophy Adventures, the Mule Deer Foundation. Kenetrek Boots, cheaper than dirt.com. ACI and the Ammo and More Store in Stevensville, Montana. And the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle by the Montana Rifle Company. This segment brought to you by Nikon Optics. Trust earned Nikon. into the next drainage the ridge is below us so we're going to ease over there and see if we can get in position but i just hope we can get close and get it close enough where we can see it moving in and out and get a shot ready I think it's the fourth morning or so. We're, we're trying to to find the ibex, and we did. And when I'm I'm looking down at uh, the ridge where we spotted the the ibex at, they're they're just in woven in between the. They're like a cedar tree. They call them a gin tree. They didn't, I guess they make gin out of it. And he spotted. He said, "Very good ibex. Very good ibex." So I got, I got excited. You know, obviously. He's down. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I do not believe this. Hang on. Is he up? Okay, Should be right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. This is a good one, yeah? Yeah. Just a second. Yeah, he looks good. All right. Nice, <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right, we're good. Life feels good. There he is, boy. How sweet is that right there? How sweet is that right there? How many years I've been dreaming about coming to Spain? How many I've been dreaming about coming to Spain and hunting these ibex? This is the first one. There's four species of these here that you can that you can hunt. This is the besete. Yep. I'm saying it right in Spanish. Besete. That's close enough, ain't it? All right. <laughs> so, anyways, there he is. How old is it? How old is he? 12, 12, 12 years old. How sweet is that? But this was, this was a very good one and I, and I asked Manuel, you know, how, you can't tell when you go to a place and you haven't hunted something a lot, the, the size always. This one, this one ended up, I asked him how good is it, very good one, and he said yes, it's a very good one. So, so we made a play on it and was able to get a shot and thank goodness it, it worked out right. You can feel the history in Spain, very, very old. Uh, there, there's some of the buildings that still stand out here, date back to the, to the 1600s, they say. And I mean, it's you can see it, feel it, and just when you're here, you know you're in Spain. It has that feel about it. Lord willing, I'm going to be back here time.
time and time again. You see me mucho more time -o. <laughs> Good, right? <laughs> The last day we get an opportunity uh, to go with the locals. So I'm in, if it's a hunt, you know, I got a bite, I'm in. So we're going on what they call a driven hunt for a wild boar. And the wind's blowing 100 miles an hour. That you couldn't hear dog bark if it was in your hip pocket. We ended up with the hogs going out another end of a cane and we was out of the excitement. So we're back and out comes this guy and he's full of life. And uh, he's seen me and here he, here he comes, right? John Wayne! I go, man, he's pointing at my hat and he goes, I named him John Wayne. So he's John Wayne in Spain. He's got it, he's got this thing in mind. He wants to show me how to fight bulls. I didn't understand him because he wants me to fight the bull. And then I was like, no, we can sit over and shoot the bull, but we ain't, I ain't gonna fight no bull. You, you can go fight the bull. Close captioning provided by Rocky Top Outfitters. Book your hunt with Colorado today at HeyColoradoBuck.com. We'll see you on the hunt. John Wayne. John Wayne. John Wayne in Spain. <laughs> John Wayne's down. <laughs> he got me. He got me in the back.